Right. Uh, we were studying quadratics last class. We took a quiz on it. And basically, you were solving equations y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the general form or the standard form for any quadratic. shape of the graph? Yeah, parabola. And it's going to look like a Sam Drew. It's going to look like some kind of U-shaped figure. Either up or down. Now, for this particular example, which way is it going to go? It's going to go up, like an upward shaped U, or it's going to be down? Down. Why is it down? The the inverse gives us the negative. The negative in front of the? X. The first X. Um, or the X. Yeah. The x squared term. So what Sam was saying is if the a term is negative or less than zero, it's going to be a downward shaping parabola. And if a was greater than zero, it would have to be what? Uh, upward parabola. Like that. So the u would be in that form. We can actually go to our graphing calculator. And you did this last time. Hit the y equals. Okay. So hit the y equals. Let's type that in. Now, be careful because you want to make sure you hit the minus sign and not the subtraction sign. Because there's no number before it, so you have to use the minus. If you use subtraction, it's going to give you a y. If I use this guy right here, that's subtracting. Yeah. It's going to give me an error when I graph it. So you have to use the minus sign. So be careful, don't fall into that trap. I see some people doing that. So you put a little minus. Let's get rid of the other thing. And then you hit your x squared button plus 3x. And then plus 7. Hit graph. Now, if you notice, does the graph really look like that? No, this is what? What does it give me? Super zoomed in, only a certain section, or it's changed the axes. Look at the axes, they're way up. This is like going by, you know, going by a 10 scale maybe, and this is going maybe by a 20 scale or something. So, how do you always correct that to get the general picture? Zoom standard? Yes, hit Z standard or zoom standard, so hit your zoom. Z standard will give you the basic 10 by 10 grid. So hit Z standard, six. And there's your parabola. And as Sam said, and you guys kind of back them up, it's going to look down like that. That would say you. Now, we want to talk more about the maximum or minimum point. This right here is what? Is it a maximum point or a minimum point? It's the maximum point for that curve because it goes no higher than that. And then we want to try to figure out what that point is. So later today, after I'm done doing this, we're going to actually do a, kind of a physics problem and apply it to a path of objects. So how do we do that? How do we figure out the maximum point of a curve? You can trace it. You can trace it, but that might be just an approximation. It depends on maybe you think here's the top or Like you can do this, yes, you want to actually use a function. And I don't know, that looks like it's top, but it might be a little bit off. So let's let the calculator do the work. Let's use what? Second trace. Maximum in this case. So maximum, you hit maximum. And it's going to give us this left right boundary stuff again. We want to go to the left of the point. And hit enter. And then go right to the point. You guys can tell me what to stop. Yeah. Okay. 
Wait, is that to the right or to the left? Right here. Right bound. We were, yeah, we did the left one already. That one's fine. Yeah. Hit the right one. And remember to ask if you Just can. Just click it again. Yeah. So we can skip this step. We don't know. We can figure it out maybe, but go ahead and enter. So it's telling me the maximum point is 1.5. And for the x and the y coordinate is 9.25. So it's 9.25 up here and about one and a half. That's exact. You don't have to worry about tracing and saying, oh, I'm at the top yet. The pixel's a little bit off. Remember we talked about how the pixels on the computer may mislead you on where you're at slightly. So that is a good, uh, a good illustration of graphing. So, um, <clears throat> now, let's apply this to a physics class. Let's say that I gave you that the height at any time from an object. So let's say I just, I threw it up. There's a ball or something, I threw it up. <laughs> well, what's the path of that object gonna be? It's gonna look like a parabola, right? Because it's gonna keep going up until finally, right, I throw it with an initial force on that thing. It's gonna go up and up and up. And then what's actually happening physically, you know, in a physics term to that ball? Gravity's pulling it. Exactly, gravity's pulling it. So it's got to eventually come back down again until it hits the ground right there. Perfect application of parabolas. And a lot of times they'll use h of t to represent the function. h stands for height and t stands for time. So if I gave an equation, let's say, I don't know, negative x squared plus 4x um, plus, say, uh, 6. Whoops. Let's not use x, let's use what? Let's use the variable, it's t, right? To represent time. Just say, this represents the, the height of this object at any time. So, I would ask you questions like, number one, graph the path. Very good point, we're gonna hit on this. Let me get rid of this old stuff. You're right, eventually it will. So we only want to be concerned with the times that make sense. We don't want to worry about anything that's gonna make it hit the ground. So we have like a domain on this or a limitation. The equation only works based on it can only work from time a certain amount, time zero to maybe time six or whatever. We're gonna figure that out. So, but Sam's right, part of it won't make sense, but part of it will. So we want to graph the path of the object. And I'll say one more thing. I'll say the actual path of the object. We don't want to do that stuff that's on the ground, like Sam was saying. We can't do anything with negative time either, right? Because it doesn't make sense, negative time. So actual path. Graph the path of, graph the actual path. In a minute, and then the second thing I want to ask you is find max height third thing uh, is find when it hits the ground is in inches, just, you know, let's make the height in feet, make more sense, the height is in feet, and let's say time is in uh, seconds. Just that we have some kind of dimensions on this thing. Okay, so we're going to use exactly what we did on the last problem. We're going to let the calculator do all the work. Okay. We're going to let the calculator do all the work. So, let's type it in. 
Now we can use x's as our variable, we'll just remember that represents t. So we're going to type in negative x squared plus 4x plus 6. Hit graph. Now, you don't want to just blindly copy that graph. You want to do the actual path of the rocket. So, am I going to draw any of this stuff over here? Why? The actual path of the object, though. Is the object actually going down here? Because what's over here? Nothing. Negative what? What, what numbers are you? Okay, what type of numbers? Negative. 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 So, and what does this x axis stand for? Meaning negative what? Time. So, can you have negative time? No. So, it's not the actual path of the rocket, so the, the, the object. So, you started here at time zero. <coughs> so, if you wanted to draw that, we would say, okay, the actual path of this object starts at time equals zero. So, we gotta figure out what that height is at zero. So, we could either trace it or figure out, go to the table and figure out when this thing equals zero. Six. six. How, how else can you figure that out, by the way? You look at the last term. Exactly. The, the C term is the y-intercept. So it crosses six. Right, so you're taking that six feet higher. He's throwing it from his own six feet. So, very good. Very good observation. So I hope you catch on to the fact that you do not need to write the left side of t equals zero, negative one, uh, negative one, negative two. It doesn't make sense. Let's go back to the graph. Now, I want to figure out the maximum height. That's step two. And as we do this, we'll finish up part uh, part one. And then we'll get where it hits the ground. So, how do I figure out the max height again? We do the same exact thing we just did with the last problem. Let's use what? Second trace. Yeah, second trace. We're going to use max. Left boundary, right boundary stuff. So, is this good for left boundary? Yeah. All right, and enter. Let's go to the right of the point. How's that looking? Good enough. We maximize at 210. You can say two. So at one, two, it's going to hit a maximum height at 10. Right there. We can label it and say 210. Then gravity's pulling on this object. And then what's going to happen now? It's going to actually what? Start to start to come back down again to Earth, and it's going to hit the ground at some time right there. So now we have the actual path of the rocket. We found the maximum height to be h of two equals ten feet. So in two seconds it hits maximum height. I mean that's the most practical thing in the world, but it did. So uh, when eight, uh, t equals two seconds, that's when it hit the maximum height. The maximum height was 10 feet. Lastly, when does the object hit the ground? Well, what are we looking for? X. The x intercept. So how can we zero. figure that out? So if you trace for the zero. We could trace it to zero. Can we look at the calculator table? We can do that. Or is there something we can use with second trace? Zero. Zero is actually it. See how we use using multiple things now? So hit number two. Now, we're going to go to the left and the right of that point. So don't move you guys. Just finishing up here. So remember, we're looking for this guy now. That's when he hits the ground. This guy right here. So, uh, is that good for left boundary? Alright, hit enter. 